Hello, this is Jacqueline from Jack Knits, and you've probably have seen before the beautiful stitch, the brioche rib stitch or the fisherman's rib stitch, and you may have wondered, what is the difference between those two? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly what is similar and what is different between those two stitches and show you exactly how to do each one. So let's take a look. So let's take a look at both the brioche rib stitch and at the fisherman's rib stitch. You may have seen many videos on YouTube about these two stitches because they are such a beautiful stitch. They've got these beautiful elongated stitches, these deep crevices of pearl stitches. It's the same on both sides of the fabric. They are just beautiful to knit up. So what is the difference between the two? Well, let me bring you in on a little secret. The end result of both of these stitches is exactly the same they have the exact same look. See the elongated stitches and the deep crevices of the pearl? The stitch look at the end is exactly the same, but the difference is the stitch on how to get to this final stitch. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do both of these stitches and you can determine for yourself which one you prefer. Now you can see there is a little differences on both of these swatches and basically it is with the fisherman's rib, which I did here in the white. The brioche rib is in the red. The fisherman's rib is a little bit of a tighter gauge for my knitting. It is a little denser uh, fabric. The ribbing is a little bit closer together than what occurred up here on the uh, brioche rib stitch. So there might be slight differences in the gauge, but the look is exactly the same. And again, one stitch might be easier for you to do, uh, may knit up faster than the other one. So experiment with both of them and see which one you prefer. So let's take a look at how to actually do each of these stitches and then you can experiment and find out which you like best. All right, let's take a look at how to do the fisherman's rib stitch first. I'm gonna show you with a swatch of both stitches with a worsted weight yarn. So we just have a little comparison with what they look like compared to the bulky weight. And for both swatches, let's cast on a total of 14 stitches. All right, we've got 14 stitches casted on and the fisherman's rib as well as the brioche rib both start out with a setup row. So we're going to do a setup row for the fisherman's rib. We're going to start with a knit stitch. That's going to be our salvaged edge, edge stitch at the beginning and end of each round. And the setup row for the fisherman's rib is just a one by one uh, ribbing. So we're going to start with a purl one, then a knit one, purl one, knit one. And we're going to do that to the end of this row. stitch. All right, the first row for the fisherman's rib stitch is actually just a one row repeat. So you're just going to continue with this row uh, continually. But again, we're going to start with our knit stitch. And then the next stitch you see is a purl stitch here with a bump. So we are going to just purl that purl stitch. Then you see that the next one is a knit stitch and we're going to knit this one in the stitch below. So instead of knitting it right up here where you normally would knit a stitch, we're gonna take a look at the little gap in the stitch below and knit through that gap instead. So knit through that gap. And then the next stitch again is a purl stitch, so we will purl that stitch. Knit one below in that gap below. Purl one below, purl, knit one, oops, there we go, knit one below, purl, and that is what you will do to the end of the row, and we will end again with our one knit stitch salvage edge. Okay, so that is the row that you're going to continually repeat for the fisherman's rib. You're going to do that knit stitch salvage, or you can do a slip stitch on the beginning of the round if you prefer. Purl stitch, knit one below. Purl stitch, knit one below. 
and that is it. You're just going to do that across every single row and that's going to produce this elongated knit stitches, these deep crevices of purl stitches, and it is a beautiful stitch. So let me just work a little bit of a head because uh, when we do this stitch, it takes several rows for you really to kind of see the pattern emerging and to really see the definition of the stitches. So let me work ahead and I will get back with you after I've knitted several rows so you can kind of see how this looks in the fisherman's rib. All right, now that I've done a few rows of the fisherman's rib, you can see the pattern coming through, the beautiful ribbing that we love so much with that fisherman's rib. So that is how to do a fisherman's rib stitch. So now let's take a look at the brioche rib stitch, and it will produce the same outcome, but it's just a different stitch on how to get there. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna use this green worsted weight for that. Again, I will cast on 14 stitches, and we will do a brioche rib swatch and I'll show you how to do that stitch as well. All right, we've got 14 stitches on our needle. Now along, same with a fisherman's rib, the brioche rib also has a setup row that you will do for your first row. So let's start with that setup row. We're going to again begin and end each row with a salvage edge stitch, a knit stitch, and then we're going to do a yarn over and then the next stitch with the yarn and back, slip that next stitch, okay? And then the next stitch, we will just do a regular knit stitch. Let's do that again. Yarn over, slip that stitch as if to purl with the yarn and back, and then a knit stitch. So that is the setup row for the brioche rib. We'll do that till the end. Yarn over, slip, knit, yarn over, slip, knit, and we will end with a regular knit stitch. Okay, so that is our setup row. Now we are ready to begin the brioche stitch. It is actually very similar to the setup row. There's really not that much difference, but we are again going to set up or start with the first stitch being a knit stitch for our salvage stitch. Then we're going to do that same two-step repeat of the yarn over and with the yarn in back slip that first stitch. So see that little, it's one single stitch. We're going to always slip that single stitch after we do the yarn over. Now you can see that we've got kind of this double strand stitch on our left needle. And we are going to now knit those two stitches together. That's actually called a brioche knit stitch when you knit those two strands together. And then we'll go back to the yarn over with yarn in back, slip that next stitch purl wise. And here we've got that double strand again, which we will knit two together, knit those two together, the brioche knit stitch, and repeat those two steps. So yarn over, slip with yarn in back, knit those two together. Yarn over, slip, and knit those two together. Yarn over, slip, brioche knit, which is those two together. Yarn over, slip, brioche knit, and we will end again with a knit stitch. Okay, let's just do a few more stitches on the next row together, and then as I did before, I'll work ahead so you can kind of see how this stitch shapes up. We're going to start with our knit stitch, yarn over, with yarn in back, slip, and brioche knit. So that is just, you will just repeat that row same thing with every single row, and it produces a beautiful brioche rib. All right, here's the brioche rib stitch with a few more rows in it, and you can see here as well that the beautiful ribbing stitch kind of presented itself. So you can see, based on these two stitches, the fisherman's rib and the brioche, that the stitches are actually very, very similar. Just the gauge is slightly different for me when I do the fisherman's rib where, as opposed to the brioche rib, but the end result is the same. So again, I would ex uh, encourage you to just experiment with both stitches, find out which you prefer to use. I think that I knit quite uh, quicker with the brioche stitch than with the fisherman's rib. There's no purling in this as there is in the fisherman's rib, so it's really a matter of preference, but they both make a beautiful stitch. 
Now you may also wonder what's the difference between the fisherman's rib and you may have heard the half fisherman's rib. Well, it's basically the same stitch using the knit one below and then purling one, but on the reverse side, you're just knitting all the way across. This uh, stitch here uh, is that half, half fisherman's rib and because you're knitting on the back side, the back of it is slightly different looking than the front. So you can kind of see that with, with this. The stitching is a little bit different. It's not completely reversible as is the regular fisherman's or the brioche rib. You can see here that the back side is completely the same as the front. And also, one extra little tip, when you're knitting brioche rib or the fisherman's rib, it is very difficult, if you make a mistake, to frog or take off your uh, stitches off your needle, frog back, and try to put them back on the needle in the correct way. So therefore, I would strongly encourage you to use a proactive lifeline. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, I do have a full video about how to use a proactive lifeline to save your knitting if you make a mistake in some of these difficult stitches. And I'll have a link in the upper right hand corner for you to follow as well. So I hope you give this a try. Take a look at these beautiful brioche stitches or fisherman's rib. Again, same, same look, different stitch to get there. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications each week all about fun new stitches and knitting patterns. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy knitting!